this fella here next to me, he's a dentist, but he bets thousands. No kidding. Remember these, Doc? You remember them? I think those were planted on Mr. Revens' body. Why would you say a thing like that? I don't understand how they got in his pocket. Well, I thought I explained it to you, Lieutenant. He must have picked them up at the house. But what bothers me is not a single match was used. Now, whenever I borrow a match, it's because I want to light my cigar. Why would a guy pick up a book of matches and not use a single match? I imagine because he wanted to use them later. He had a completely filled lighter in his pocket. Lieutenant, it wasn't Adam's first visit to the house. He could have picked those matches up at any time. Well, I would buy that if I found them in his jacket pocket. But these were found in his shirt pocket. And if he was anything like me, he changed his shirt every day. Uh-huh. I see what you mean. I'm stuck. I don't know how they got there or somebody put them there. I wish I could help you. Well, don't worry about it. If your horse wins, that's the important thing. Then you've done your share. No problem, Lieutenant. Bet the winners. I always bet the winners. Right. Say, did you know that in Mr. Evans's car at the crash site, we found the gear shift? In neutral? Excuse me. This is my seat. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Did you know that, Doc? I didn't know that. Oh, uh -huh. It just seems strange, you know, when I first saw it, that someone who crashed a car into a ditch during a fatal heart attack, that he would put the gear into neutral. I know what you mean. I wonder if that could have been deliberate, just to make sure that the police wouldn't simply write it off as a heart attack and let it go at that. Excuse me. You guys are real pain in the butt. Yeah, you got that right. Let's get back to business. What about number one here? Sir. Sir. I didn't come here because of my bed. He didn't. Now, now it was something else. Um, sir, I assume you know what your wife and Mr. Evans were doing just before he died? Yes, Lieutenant, I do know. Do you know? I thought you did. But he wanted to protect her anyway. I still do. You must love her very much. She's got my number, Lieutenant. Well, I got some very good news to tell you about her. I also have some not so good news. Um, could we go somewhere where we could talk? Absolutely. There are very few husbands that would do what you did. You're very rare. I really had no choice. Why don't we just stand at the bar? Is that all right? Fine with me. Would you care for a drink, sir? Lieutenant, you said you had good news about my wife. I'd like to hear it. Uh, she's innocent. What? She didn't do it. She didn't do it? No, sir. Well, that's terrific. <laughs> that's great news. God, what a relief. You sure? Absolutely. Uh, Red? Yes, sir? Would you have a minute? I'm going to show you. We know how much margarita was in the blender because the residue left a mark. Uh, would you do me a favor, sir? Yes, sir. Would you fill that with water right up to that mark? Just water, sir? Just <laughs> water. Believe it or not, I used to have red hair. Uh, this is uh, the actual glass that Evans drank the margarita from. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Now, let me show you something, sir. This is gonna put your mind at rest. Mr. Evans drinks his first margarita. Then he drank his second margarita. And we know he had two margaritas. How? Because the glass and the blender were empty when we found them. Problem. How did he drink the second margarita? Answer. He couldn't have. Why not? Because he would have been dead after the first one. According to the coroner, the amount of poison in that glass, he'd have been dead in a minute. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that there was no poison in the blender when he drank the margarita. None. The poison was put in the glass and the blender after he was dead. The poison in the margarita didn't kill him. Poison from someplace else killed him. Someplace else? Someplace else. <laughs> so your wife, she's in the clear. That's good news, right? Wonderful news, Lieutenant. Just wonderful. So what's the not so good news? Oh, well, that's a little complicated to explain. Maybe I'd better show it to you. Uh, just take a minute. Uh, sir, did you know that the night your wife called the poker game for help, that uh, she dialed 911, but she didn't get 911? She got John Valentine's house. Listen, if she got John's house, she must have dialed John's number. Well, she was having an affair with another man. It's a big question as to whether she was going to call her husband. And she's sure that she pressed the 911 button. Here's what I think happened. Press the speaker button, not a 911 button. John Valentine's residence. That's what I think happened. I think somebody reprogrammed the 911 button so that it would ring at John Valentine's house. Are you telling me that you found the 911 button on that phone programmed to ring John's number? Oh, no, sir, but whoever changed it originally was too clever to leave it that way. And it only takes a second to reprogram it. Excellent work, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. Excellent work. My goodness. You've really spent some time on this. Ah, yes, sir. Interesting theory. Should I call my lawyer? Well, that's up to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing that puzzles me. Why don't you arrest me? That's a good question. That is a good question. Red, a scotch for the lieutenant, and I'd like a glass of milk, please. Yes, sir. It's my lucky drink. Lieutenant, I assume that when you said you had bad news for my wife, that you meant that her husband not only murdered her lover, but was attempting to frame her for the crime. Ah, uh, that is true, sir. I also assume that uh, you've spoken to my in-laws and that they told you I was a leech, that I lived off their money, that I manipulated my wife, and they wanted to kick me out. Yes, sir, I did. You found a terrific motive. My wife ends up in prison or an asylum. I look like a devoted husband, and my father-in-law would do anything for me. It sounds right. You think that I murdered Adam Evans? I do, sir. Tell me, how did I do that? I don't know, sir. You don't know? <laughs> That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Red. Well, it's fortunate I'm so good-natured, Lieutenant. Somebody else might take offense. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go out there and root for our horse. Now, you're welcome to join me, or, uh... You could stay here and try to figure it out. 
I think I'll stay here, sir. I thought you would. I'll see you later, Lieutenant. One of the outsiders in here. Just one more thing.